Good morning, everybody. There we go. I hate to break up all of the great conversations that you all are having. I hope you're enjoying your breakfast. Um, maybe my remarks will be short enough such that you'll be able to get back to it uh, before your first session of the day. But I wanted to sort of be up here and, and uh, just chat a little bit about sort of where we've been, the conference today. I thank so many of you for being here. See, our, our, one of our board directors just got in. Um, I wanted to welcome all of you and say good morning and um, share with everybody that the great news for this year is that I made it. Uh, thank you. Uh, and if this will work, there we go. Uh, many of you know me. I'm the executive director of Feeding Wisconsin. And around this time last year, um, in preparing for our 2018 summit, um, I was probably on a phone with our photographer, Sean, trying to negotiate our contract for him to come provide photography services while my wife was going to go into an MRI at Marshfield Clinic. Um, no worries, though. I think Sean, uh, Sean made it here. He's here back again this year uh, to provide photography services. And um, I thought that that was going to be the, you know, week out the worst thing that we had had to go through last year. Um, but then the, the day the conference actually happened, um, I arrived here. My wife wasn't, still wasn't feeling great after her first hospitalization. And um, when I got here, just as setup was beginning, um, I got a call that an ambulance was coming to our house to take my wife to the hospital again. And so, like any reasonable husband, I turned it around. I told my team, hey, I got to leave. Um, 270 people are coming to this conference. You guys are on your own. And they said, we got this. Um, and many of you who were in this room last year, while I was in Milwaukee, uh, sent really lovely notes, prayers, well wishes to me and my wife. And believe me, those were all incredibly well received. Um, the Feeding Wisconsin team last year, led by Steph Dorfman, who I don't know if she's in this room, um, who at the time was about six months pregnant, did such an incredible job with the conference last year. And it all made me feel so incredibly cared for and also so incredibly irrelevant. Um, but during that time, I couldn't help but to think about the fact that at the end of these two hospitalizations for my wife, um, that we would be more or less okay. Uh, you know, two hospitalizations in two weeks, it's a lot. Um, but because I had a good job with benefits, an understanding board of directors, and an incredible team, we would be able to weather the economic impacts of this health issue for my wife. This, as you know, is not the same for many of the clients and people that we serve in our respective networks. And if it weren't for fate, our fate or our dumb luck, we would have unneeded, undoubtedly needed the help of many of you in this room. I tell you this on, on this near one year anniversary, not only to say thank you um, from the bottom of my heart, but to draw these parallels to our friends and neighbors who you are helping every day in your food pantries, your meal programs, your health clinics, your WIC offices, school meal programs, and outreach programs who have not been so lucky to have the supports that we have had. The good news is, for us, uh, that compared to last year, my wife is, is doing much better. She's up and about. She really wanted to be here today, but she couldn't. Um, and while she has some bad days mixed with some exceedingly normal and welcome regular days, the trend line is going in the right direction for her, and we're super excited. Um, in the same way, the trend lines for many of the people we are serving are going in the right direction as well. Unemployment is at an all-time low. Food share participation in Wisconsin has plateaued and has followed national trends to go down, right? That's good. Um, this is all good stuff. But for those of you who know me, I'm troubled by a few things. <laughs> um, I spent a good portion of my year last year after the conference and after my wife's health scare traveling the state with Sunseed Research to conduct a series of focus groups with food pantry clients. The results of this work will be presented later on today in the What Clients Want session, um, I think at 2.30. The stories we heard gave real life resonance to my feeling that despite the great indicators, people are still hurting really badly 
and in very, very real ways that macroeconomic indicators don't give voice to. Here are three things that give me concern. While unemployment is low, wages generally have not increased, and the labor force has gotten tighter. At the same time, labor force participation has also been declining and is at an all-time low for working age men. The decline for men has something to do with more women coming to the labor force, which is generally a really good thing. Uh, but with robots coming, uh, there will likely be more and more job dislocation across gender in the next five to 10 years. What is the number one job title in our state, ladies and gentlemen? It's truck driver. And you don't have to be a genius to know that at some point in the future, what it means to be a truck driver is gonna change. This reminded me of um, Eric, a welder in Marshfield who is uh, taken to picking up shifts at the, uh, for low pay at a local warehouse because he can't find a job doing the thing that he's trained to do, which is welding. Um, despite the fact that he was working and looking for a job, he still couldn't make ends meet. He told us, they say there are all these available jobs everywhere, but they're all at the clinic. I'm not gonna get hired to do clinic work. I'm not hiring a welder. The second thing that worries me is that we as a state are all getting older. Um, and due to the Great Recession, many of the folks who lost their jobs at age 55 in 2007, 2008, and who may not have been able to get rehired at the same level of their previous job, um, are gonna be turning 65 pretty soon. And they're getting older, poorer, and with fewer assets. These people are like Richard, who was um, 74 when we met him, and he was let go recently from a manufacturing company that he had worked his entire life. And when his boss told him that they had to let him go and make some cuts, he said something that broke my heart. He said, I told them, do you have to cut so deep? They also knew that he was taking care of his wife, who was also in her 70s, dealing with congestive heart failure. I can't tell you how many people we met um, and we spoke to over the last year uh, who were in their 60s and 70s, um, and when we asked them, where do you see yourself in the next five years? They said, well, not gonna be able to work any better. And I'm already on government benefits. So this leads me to the third thing that concerns me is that the people we serve largely depend on government benefits. Now, this might seem to many of you like an axiomatic truth, right? The, you know, the folks we serve rely on food share, they rely on Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. But the threat that there are to these programs are very real, and they're constantly at risk, and they might be cut. And in order for us to improve them, as a group of committed advocates, hunger fighters, and health promoters, um, we need a stable policy environment and a stable government um, in order to develop strong and sound social safety net programs and policies. Well, these stories right, are why we are here at this conference to improve our ability to work together to serve, advocate for, and improve where our friends and neighbors live and work and play. Over the next two days, you will have 35 breakout sessions and five tracks that we believe will help to serve as the blueprint for how we can grow together on common ground, our conference theme, to create a healthy and hunger-free Wisconsin. The state federal nutrition track in Room E are going to help you to better understand how nutrition programs work, how to increase access to these programs, and how to engage and to improve these programs. The family economic security track in Room F will give attendees a sense of some of the challenges that many of our clients face day to day and um, outline policies, programs, and legislation that could help create some better opportunities for these folks. The community partnerships track in room G will give attendees an opportunity to learn about how we can work together to fight hunger and improve health in local communities, um, address social factors in health, um, how, to, how the hidden problem of senior nutrition, and how we um, serve our friends and neighbors who might have complex needs. In Room H, the Wisconsin Local Food Network track, our conference planning partner, will, have, um, will help food systems and food advocates learn more about the assets and the needs that, are, that we all need to, to be able to build a more connected and empowered local food system. In Room I, we have our emergency food system track, which will help food pantries, agencies, and meal programs grow their skills in building a 21st century emergency food system. 
This year, we made a conscious decision not to silo these tracks, but to make them all cross-functional. So while um, we have tracks, right, named after these different um, areas, you should be able to find your way into the session more or less and find something that will help you grow in your work. It was our goal to force some tough choices for you all at every session block. We hope we were successful at that. In addition, we have also intentionally not programmed a specific advocacy session and have challenged our planning committee to embed the spirit of advocacy in each of these sessions because we need good advocacy and good advocates to ensure that we're able to improve these programs. So for our general sessions, I, you guys are in for an incredible treat. We are so blessed to have two incredible luncheon speakers. Today, uh, Venus Williams, the executive director of Alice's Garden, will be joining us. Um, she is one of the foremost community builders through food that I know of, and she will be here to talk more about how we come together to ensure that all communities can feed themselves. Having seen Venus speak a few times, you all are going to be for an, you all are in for a real treat. Then tomorrow, our keynote speaker is Sarah Smarsh, and I'm incredibly excited to hear her talk. I don't know how many of you read her book. But her personal narrative of growing up in rural Kansas and seeing how policy and culture affected her forebearers and the difficult choices she had to make to break the cycle is at once all too, com all too familiar and super compelling. The stories that she tells in her book of her family reminded me so much of the people that we met in our travels over the last year um, around the state. These were all proud, hardworking men and women who literally broke their bodies working, giving of themselves to hard work and labor with little to show for it. And when they finally swallowed their pride to come ask for help, the general narrative in the public is that by needing help, they're lazy. What a con, right? And so this brings me back to my wife, who, like Sarah, grew up on a farm but in Wisconsin. Like all farm girls, she was tough and hardworking and knew in her bones that she needed to get to college. Like Sarah, my wife was the first person in her family to go to college. And like Sarah, my wife was a McNair Scholar, a federally funded program that helped first generation students and other minorities get ready for grad school. They both went to grad school. Sarah in New York, my wife in Los Angeles. Um, and they both, as adults, having seen what the coasts have to offer them, decided to move back to their home states. And tomorrow, Sarah will be speaking at this conference about her book that was a National Book Award finalist last year, while my wife is back on the farm, still recuperating from her chronic health condition. How can it be that these two women who have such similar paths yet have ended up with such different life outcomes? The only thing that I can come to, the only answer that I have, is that no matter how hard you try, and strive and work, life is hard and uncertain. And the best thing we can do is to try our hardest to be kind and take care of each other. There's, a, there's an old Virginia Woolf quote about how the future is dark and unknowable. And, and that in itself is the best kind of future, right? Because the future is not foreordained. We can make it. And we can make an incredibly positive future just simply by always choosing to take care of each other. And I hope that at the conference you all learn a little bit more and be inspired to make a better future for our friends and neighbors because ultimately they are people like us, right? They are people who if not for fate and dumb luck are like me and my wife. Okay, so enough for the heavy stuff. Now the fun announcements. <laughs> um, Here's some things you need to know in order to have a fun a successful conference. In the evening, we're going to have a welcome reception in the Upper Dells Ballroom, which is upstairs on the second floor. There you'll be able to follow up with some of your uh, new friends and old colleagues and some speakers from our first day here. Over the course of your day, I actually urge you to think about one interesting thing you learned today and share it with someone new at the reception. There's a sign outside the elevators to, to get you guys upstairs to the Upper Dells Ballroom. This year, as many of you know, we also have an official, I think this is the next slide, conference app. Um, in addition to your agenda and speaker bios, the Whova app has a lot of enhanced networking functionalities like contact exchange through QR code, sending messages to other attendees, and creating social, um, social groups and community boards. 
Um, it's been so much fun to see so many of you engaging on the community boards. And um, it's just, it's really cool that this, uh, that this app has <laughs> sort of did the thing we intended it to do. Um, you can also, at the sessions, you'll also be able to fill out your session evaluations in app, um, which will be super exciting because we, then we don't have to actually code all of the, the paperwork. Um, so if you haven't downloaded it, there's a QR code up front that you can scan on your phone to download, super easy. Um, and um, games. Over the course of the next two days, uh, we will have three social conference, engage social conference engagement games for folks who are on the Whova app. So th to participate, you have to have the app. The first one is the leaderboard challenge, which means that for everything you post in a community discussion or making an activity or checking into your sessions, you get points. And the winner at the end of lunch tomorrow, the leader on that leaderboard will win a free conference registration to next year's summit. It's valued, I think, at about $300. Um, so that's super exciting. I should note that you might see the person at the head of the leaderboard right now is one of our staff. Um, our staff is not eligible to win, so, so don't mind her at the top of the list. Um, the second one, I have a note here that was told that I need to do this because, because the second one is a photo contest. Uh, post your selfies and photos to the Whova app and the most liked photo, and again, I can't win, so that amazing photo that I just took isn't eligible, um, will win a signed copy of Heartland, Sarah Smarsh's uh, book. And the third game is a caption contest. So after you, you like a photo, um, add a fun or witty insightful comment or caption uh, to the photo for a chance to win a fun coffee prize package from our friends at Kickapoo Coffee, which is, I don't know if any of you know, but they make delicious coffee out in Viroqua. So um, it should go without saying that you should be conferencing first and hoovering second, um, but we do want you to engage with the app. That's why, that's why we have it. Um, finally, there are two other surveys that are done on paper that are included in your bags. The, um, there's, a, there's a whole conference evaluation that I think is on goldenrod or gold orangey paper. Uh, please fill that out at the end of the conference and drop it off at the front desk registration um, when our registration um, with your name badges you leave either at the end of today or tomorrow if you're not coming or end of today if you're not joining us for tomorrow or tomorrow at the end of the conference. Um, and the other one is a green form um, which is a data and needs evaluation form for a Wisconsin specific state hunger study that some of our friends from um, UW-Madison will be um, talking to you a little bit more about at lunch. So we hope we can get your help with that because it is super important to have uh, feedback from um, folks on the front lines about how we might be able to work together on a hunger study. So with all of that said, um, I believe that my comments are just in time to have you wrap up and get to your first session of the day. Thank you so much for coming. I'm looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you.